So I'm guessing that you found Part 1C a little bit stressful. I know when I wrote it, that was the one that made me a little bit stressed too. The good news is, we're on the downhill side now. Um, there's just a l couple more things we want to do that's actually going to be kind of impressive in terms of how much calculation we can do and so on. So for Part 1D, it's basically just a slightly modified version of Part 1C. I'm still giving you the latitude and the longitude. Well, actually, I'm giving you a city, and you have to look at the latitude and longitude, but whatever. I mean, you've got the latitude and longitude station, you've got the Julian day, and you have an azimuth angle for the solar panel. We're going to go ahead and say that the panel always needs to face south. I, I think it's a reasonable assumption to say that the panels always need to have be facing south. The question is, what is their elevation angle? Based on that, I want you to compute the panel elevation that produces the most power on a given day. I'm, so, like, you know, on our day, 180, what would be the panel's elevation angle that would produce the most energy uh, over the course of the day per square meter of the panel's area? And this is actually going to be a surprisingly small modification of what you already have. I mean, I'm going to actually pretty much give it to you right here on the screen. You're just going to be making a loop where we're going to be trying a wide range of panel elevation angles. I tried here from... Uh, my panel elevation is going to range from zero, I'm sorry, from 10 to 90. Okay, I think it's possible that the panel elevation could be as little as like 10 degrees. It's the vector normal to the panel is practically pointing at the horizon to as much as straight up and down is the range of panel elevation angles I'm trying. For every one of those, all I want to do is just run the calculations I did before, but for that panel elevation angle. Literally just copy Project 1C over to a new thing, Project 1D, and then add this line up here, you are, for this panel elevation, for a range of panel elevation angles, do it at 10 degrees, 11 degrees, 12 degrees, 13 degrees, do exactly the same thing. Now you do need, do need to remove one line. Your old program for Project 1C, you actually set panel elevation, okay, just delete that line, we don't need that anymore. And just keep computing it. You're gonna compute the power, the total energy, for when the panel was at 10 degrees, when the panel was at 11 degrees, when the panel's at 45 degrees, when the panel's at 90 degrees, all those angles. And all you're gonna do is figure out which of them was the greatest. Now, we talked about that, how to do this uh, a little bit back in module two, but I thought I'd give you kind of a little bit more guidance here. Um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have some kind of variable that's called max energy or something like that. That is, this is the amount of energy I got from the panel when it was at whatever I've seen so far is the uh, elevation angle that produced the most energy. I'm gonna start off with a crap value in there. I mean, obviously, even, the, even having the panel pointing at just 10 degrees above the horizon, we're gonna get more than negative 99 uh, joules per square meter, right? I mean, we're, in worst case scenario, we're gonna get zero energy, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to compute for that day at, at, at that elevation angle, compute the total amount of energy. Now, look what it says here. If, you know, so we're going to compute it for every minute or whatever, and then we're going to integrate it, and we get today's energy. Or more accurately, maybe the total the energy at that angle. If that's more than the maximum amount of energy we've seen so far, set the maximum amount of energy we've seen so far to this one, and I need a variable, I called it elevation for maximum energy or something like that. Set it to panel, panel's elevation in degrees. All right, and then the end four. Now do it for the next one. So, all right, the first time we go through with a panel elevation angle of 10 degrees, we're going to have produced more than negative 999 joules per square meter of energy. So today's energy will be more than max energy. So max energy is set to whatever we got at this horrible panel angle our elevation with max energy will be set to 10 degrees, and then we'll do it for 11 and 12. And probably as we tip the panel farther and farther and farther, we'll be getting more and more power until we hit whatever's the maximum. And then from there, as we tip the panel farther and farther back, we're going to be getting less and less energy uh, over the course of the day. Okay, I can believe that this would work. All right, I mean, it's just, a, we've landed like five lines here. How am I going to know if it's working? Well, if you use the values of the latitude and longitude and the uh, time zone and so on for Evansville, and you use Julian Day 180, and you use an azimuth of 180 degrees, we're assuming the panel's going to face south, your answer is going to be 87 degrees. Your panel needs to have its azimuth, ang uh, its elevation angle to 87 degrees, practically a flat. At first that spooked me, but then I remembered 180 is like, you know, the middle of summer. I mean... Uh, uh, the latitude of uh, Evansville is only, uh, you know, 
10 degrees separate from or something uh, the um, the solar declination on that day so the sun is coming practically right overhead it's only it's coming up like 85 degrees above the horizon or something like that or 80 degrees above the horizon uh, it's gonna have almost flat is gonna be the highest uh, the most optimal uh, orientation for the panel on that particular day obviously at other times of the year when the sun is lower in the sky we're gonna wish the panel was tipped more all right so if you can get this to work for Evansville, then the question is, can you get it to work for your city as well? How bad is this? Well, I again, when I stripped out all the white space and comments and so on out of my version of the program, I ended up with uh, Project 1D having 74 working lines. Um, I have every confidence it can be done in fewer lines. Um, almost every single line in this part of the program came from Part 1C. There was only like five new lines or something compared to 1C. Honestly, Part 1D is a pretty easy part of this program. In some ways, once you have 1C working, 1D is in some ways the easiest part of the, of the whole program here. So, once you get it working for the Evansville and you can get the same answers I got for Evansville, modify the program so that it works for the city I sent you, the latitude and longitude and time zone and so on for that city, and then submit your program to me using Turnit. Just so I can kind of keep track of how everybody's doing, email me your optimal uh, elevation angle according to your program. Again, you'll see this on the manageable steps page uh, under deliverables for part 1D so that you can um, kind of keep track of have you sent everything in that you need. All right, again, sounds a little spooky. It's a little hard to get, wrap your head around how 1D works, but actually 1D is in many ways the easiest part of this project. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions.